And hypoglycemia cause anxiety or panic attacks? What is the role of blood glucose in triggering panic and anxiety? Is there a theoretical role or is there actually a role? Is there any clinical data to support this? Is there any research to support this? My name is Dr. Taranella and in this video we're going to look at the relationship between anxiety and hypoglycemia, how those two are interrelated, and what you might do about it if you think this could be going on with you. So if you like this kind of information on health related issues, nutrition, vitamins, etc. Click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get more videos like this one. Thanks again for watching. Let's dig into the question, can hypoglycemia cause anxiety? All right, so the question we want to look at today is can hypoglycemia or blood sugar issues lead to anxiety and panic attacks? And my clinical experience with this is absolutely it can. It makes a lot of sense why it would, et cetera. But you do have to figure out if you're actually having hypoglycemia to figure this out. Now, first of all, what is hypoglycemia? Basically, hypoglycemia is when you have an acute drop in your blood sugar below what the body senses as normal. Now, typically that's going to be below 60 milligrams per deciliter, but your threshold may be lower than that or slightly higher than that based on what your body is used to, what your pancreas and other systems in your body are used to seeing. Generally, this is going to occur from an excess of insulin that drives your glucose down very quickly. And then you start you know, may not happen like right after you eat it, maybe like two hours later, three hours later, it really is kind of dependent on how your body responds to certain foods and what its natural rhythms are. But when your blood sugar drops below that threshold, that critical threshold, your body's going to start producing more epinephrine. And that epinephrine is there to help release some of the stored glucose, the stored sugar that's in your muscles and in your liver. But what that epinephrine also does is it's there as part of the fight or flight chemicals in your body. And that chemical is designed to make you feel anxious. It's designed to make you fight or flight the area because it's a danger response. So naturally, when you have more epinephrine floating, flowing through your system, you're going to be a little bit more on edge. You're going to see the things around you in a um, panicked way or stressed way. You're going to look for what's wrong, what's going on. And you may not understand that it is your blood sugar that's causing that. Now, this isn't the case for everyone, but there are certain cases cases where this could be going on. And it's a pretty simple fix for people that have this going on. The trick is identification of this problem when you are having anxiety. And I'll talk about some of the ways to go about that as well. But back to the epinephrine story, when that epinephrine is released, it's going to bring your blood glucose back up, but it doesn't happen immediately either. So you may be in an anxious state for some time before things even out. And you may not really understand why that's happening. Now, the other thing is not everyone that has hypoglycemia is going to feel anxious. Some people may actually like the feeling. And it really depends on how you're wired, how much epinephrine is being produced and what your normal baseline is. So there's the reasoning or the theory behind why hypoglycemia, low blood sugar can lead to panic attacks and even a more generalized anxiety for some people. Now, that's not to say that everyone that has this is going to have anxiety or panic attacks, but when you do have hypoglycemia, you're going to have a relatively higher anxiety level, relatively higher stress level than if you're not hypoglycemic. And that's just by the nature of what epinephrine does to human body and psychology. Now, just because that makes a lot of theoretical sense doesn't mean it's it's necessarily valid. Now, I have seen this in my practice and there are case reports about this, but let's see what kind of actual research there is about this particular thing. So now this is a relatively older study. I did look for you know newer studies, double blind studies, and there really wasn't a lot out there. And some of it's just more generally around mood, not necessarily anxiety. But in this study, you know, they were looking at healthy participants and they were non-diabetic as well. That's important because if you're diabetic, you're definitely going to be having more hypoglycemic events, uh, generally speaking, compared to regular population. But what they found was there was a significant increase in things like hedonic tone, uh, tense arousal, and decline in energetic arousal as compared to the euglycemic control group, which is normal glycemia. They also found uh, that there were 
you know, substantial changes in mood that were observed in the non-diabetic participants with acute hypoglycemia. And they described it in generally as a tense, tired state that persisted for 30 minutes after normal glucose was restored. So that's where that can kind of linger even after, you know, you may pick up, okay, I'm having hypoglycemia, I better do something. And it still lingers for, for a while afterwards. Now that's normal for that to happen. So you may experience things like heart palpitation, sweating, things like that. That's what epinephrine does. And some of the other chemicals that kick in hormones and things that kick in when you are hypoglycemic. So that was one thing. And then epinephrine can be measured in the urine. And so this study looked at the association between depression and anxiety symptoms overlaying with 24 hour urinary catecholamines. Catecholamines are uh, epinephrine is one of them, norepinephrine, dopamine, et cetera. So what they found here is kind of interesting. So the epi 24 hour was positively correlated with anxiety, but it wasn't correlated with depression, meaning that those that had higher epinephrine levels tended to have anxiety. Does that mean that's always what's causing anxiety? Is it epinephrine driven? No, it doesn't. Uh, but in this one, you know, fairly small study, there was an association or correlation there. And then lastly, we'll have one more study, a high glycemic index diet, which is basically high carbohydrate diet was a risk factor for depression. Now, depression is not anxiety, but it is mood related. And what they, well, the headline kind of tells you there, but the results of the study suggest that high GI diet could be a risk factor for depression in postmenopausal women. So, and they suggested, you know, a randomized control trial, which would be great. I was not able to locate one for, uh, at least for anxiety. I didn't look for depression, but general theme here is that there's a lot of smoke around the idea of hypoglycemia causing anxiety or contributing to anxiety and panic attacks. I would think it would be more of a trigger for panic attacks specifically, just because that's kind of an acute event. It makes sense. It's not something that typically is happening every single day, but for people with generalized anxiety disorder, along with panic attacks, they may have really low blood sugar during the panic attacks and just slightly low during the day parts of the day where they're feeling anxious. So how would you go about testing for hypoglycemia? Well, generally speaking, you would just do a fasting blood sugar test, not 12 hours. You're going to see what the glucose is. And if it's low, you have hypoglycemia. But what you want to look at more closely is the intervals around after eating. So one hour after eating, two hour after eating, three hour after eating, et cetera what's happening with your insulin, what's happening with your glucose during those times, because that's, those are the times when your insulin is at its peak, usually an hour, two hours after eating. And that's when you're going to be more susceptible to hypoglycemia. Now, glycemic index or GI foods, as this study is looking at, are basically the foods that are going to have more carbohydrates. They're going to raise the blood sugar higher than other foods. So high glycemic, high, high glucose levels. And those are the types of foods that are also going to raise your insulin levels high. So I think it's always important to test for these things. If you think it could be there, that's way you know that this is a contributing factor and you know what to do about it. You can control it. There's lots of uh, ways to lower blood sugar and balance those things out. Now, if you already know you have insulin resistance, then for sure, this is something that could be contributing to your anxiety. If you don't know, you know, if you were assuming that your blood sugar is normal, that's when you want to go and do the test, maybe a two hour postprandial glucose test or, you know, multiple serial uh, testing for your blood sugar after eating and in a 12 hour fasted state. All right. That should give you a better understanding of the role of glucose and specifically hypoglycemia in triggering anxiety and panic attacks. Hopefully that answers answered that question. But if you do have other questions about this, please drop it in the comment section. I will put the links that were referred to in the video in the description section. So you can check those out if you want to. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.